In today's episode, we're going vertical with framing. Court Earhart is going to take us through many of the key structural design elements as well as processes that go into framing a home. <laughs> Now that the foundation has been backfilled, the next step is to bring in the supporting steel. The steel will run across the basement. You will see columns supporting the steel in the middle of the foundation. And those columns rest on the pier pads we saw earlier when we were pouring the footings. The next step is where the home really starts to take shape because the carpenters can now get started framing the home. In the case of our model, you might have wondered why the foundation wall had the drops or a variety of heights. That is because the basement is a lookout in the rear. So the carpenters will start by framing what we call a knee wall on the model to bring those walls up to even with the first floor foundation and even with the steel. The next step is to install the sill plate on the foundation and the steel and then the floor joists and then we move into building the walls, second floor, second floor walls and finally the roof. What's happening is you get first floor walls in, in this house where we've got some single story space and some two story space. We will have some construction of rafters going off the first floor walls, but we're also going to have a second floor section that's put up. Now, in past times, we used to do balloon framing where they'd put a wall that was maybe 20 feet tall and let in the joist. But what we do is what's called platform framing where we've got, a, we've got our first floor walls, the floor joist comes in, they sit right on top of that wall, right on top of the wall plates. The second floor is installed and then they'll go ahead and build the second floor walls on top of that second floor. Now, as the, before they get the rafters installed, they install what's called a ridge board. Now this ridge board is the center line. It's the highest point of the ridge. Once that's installed, you'll see them start putting the rafters against this ridge board. The rafters sit against this ridge board. What holds that ridge board up? We've got some posts holding the ridge board up, but also the rafters, in essence, act as a structural member holding the ridge board up, and they have what we call collar ties that are tying the rafters on either side of this ridge board together and create a structure so that the rafters can't, in essence, have compression from the top and pull apart and push the walls out. After all of the rafters are installed, the final thing that we do is we go ahead and put the sheeting on the roof and that ties the whole structure together. Actually, the sheeting itself on the roof also acts as a structural element, keeping the roof, helping tie it together. Our floor joists, our roof rafters, whatever horizontal um, component we have, sit on top of beams. Well, what can a beam be? Now, our typical floor joist is a two by 10. Now, you could have a smaller beam that may be two or three two by 10s that are nailed together. Another type of beam is a LVL, which is laminated veneer lumber. And this is stronger than a traditional two by 10. Then finally we get to steel. Now there's two types of steel beams that we'll use. Sometimes we'll use what's called a flitch plate where it's a flat piece of steel that we actually sandwich in between traditional lumber, like two by 10s on each side. And that is a structural component. And finally an I-beam which we're used to seeing as steel. We think of I-beams as steel beams. And so those are the type of beams that we use in the construction of a home. Framing has been completed and now is a great time to look at the framing details and why we encompass these framing details in every home that we build. What we're looking at now is an LVL beam. We use those in areas for beams where you'll see in this situation where we've connected our ceiling joist to the LVLs to create a flat ceiling where we need to have support for the beam. And that allows us to have a much more open concept home.
Here's an interesting detail to look at. This is our coffered beam ceiling in our great room. And so behind the drywall and all the trim that you'll see when you walk our model, this is actually what the framing looks like. You can see the beams that we've put around the uh, coffer that allows us to raise the ceiling. And so this is what the uh, framing looks like. Above the window, what you're looking at is a header. Windows are not structural components of a home. In essence, they're a hole in the wall, and so we need to provide a structure to go around them. And so above every window, we'll have a double two by 10, a couple of LVLs, something like that, that are based on the design guidelines that we need to hold the structure that is above it up. Then on each side of the window, you'll see a couple of shorter studs under the header, call these jack studs. And then you will see a taller stud called a king stud next to them, nailed into the side of the header, which holds it all in place. As we're talking about our headers on our exterior walls, you'll notice on some of our interior walls above doors, some doors have solid headers and some doors do not. The reason we don't have solid headers above some of the interior doors is they're not structural walls. They act just as the wall and so they don't need that structure above them in those areas. On the outside corner, we purposely adjust the studs so that we can fully fill that area with insulation. These are called California corners, and this is an important part of our energy efficient design. You may be wondering what the cross pieces in the ceiling are in the, between the floor joists. These are called bridging. They're put in after the framing work is done, and it helps strengthen the floor. In the next episode, we'll learn about some of the important exterior products that make up the building envelope. <laughs>